Hello and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your little break there, if you had a little interlude there. I'm here now with uh, Matt, Drew and Leon to look at how Web3 enables brands to build the future of consumer experiences. Don't forget you've got the chat feature on the right hand side. Please, please do use it. Pop any relevant Q&A in, in the tab there. Um, it does help out. Use the upvote system to, to push the questions you want answered to the top there. Emote down at the bottom if there's anything that you're really vibing with. I mean, that's also great. Um, and with that, I'll hand over to you guys. I'll still be here, so have fun. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Hey, everybody. I'm Drew Rosansky. I'm with uh, two of my friends and colleagues, Leon John and Matt Hingle. Uh, and we're coming from Radical Insights. Uh, Radical is a research business focused on new market insights, so helping large companies understand and engage with, with new technologies. And over the course of the last year, the three of us have been doing uh, a lot of work in the NFT space. So what is an NFT? Um, an NFT stands for non-fungible token. And what that means is that at its core, it is a unique certifiable digital asset. Just like a normal asset, this can be traded, sold, and used. But unlike a physical one, these can exist in the digital world and can be in any form. They can be an image, a piece of music, digital art, videos, tickets, and much more. So at this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that all of us have heard of an NFT at this point. Earlier this year, they were all over the news. Just as quickly as we saw a digital piece of art sell for nearly $70 million, the market turned. Claims of NFTs being dead, the bubble had burst, that it was time to move on. And now everything is circled back. If you check the news recently, you might see that there are digital cartoon animals going for millions of dollars. So, which is it? Is this thing here to stay, or is it some crazy hype cycle? And if it is here to stay, what does a digital monkey have anything to do with me and what I can do with my brand? And that, my friends, is why Leon, Matt, and myself are here today. So as a quick aside, um, the three of us joined Radical because we are obsessed with innovation. We've all been here for quite some time, and we've really seen some amazing technologies through the years. But when we look at NFTs, uh, the three of us can say that without a doubt, this is far and away the most revolutionary piece of technology we've been exposed to today. We are extremely enthusiastic about it, um, not only professionally, but also personally, uh, as shown by the three of us being uh, some of the few here today to be rocking our avatar PFPs as, as our headshots. And, and really our goal is to hopefully inspire you all to lean into NFTs and how they can be used for your brand and really how to think about entering. So why is it interesting to us? Well, it's really not just a JPEG, not just something that can be right-clicked and saved onto your desktop, but rather it's an extremely innovative piece of technology, one that can be used to engage and facilitate exceptional consumer experiences. And thinking about the role of brands and how this technology can be used, really the creative possibilities are truly endless. That all sounds pretty damn cool, right? But how can an NFT be used to do any of that? Imagine something like a Gucci purse. This asset is something that signals cultural and social capital. It illustrates scarcity and that you're part of a community. Now next, imagine if by holding that purse, and this purse is one that everybody knows is 100% authentic, but also imagine that by holding this purse, I was granted special privileges and benefits from the Gucci brand. Maybe just by holding this purse, I would get access to a special viewing just for purse holders. Maybe just by holding this Gucci purse, I got discounts to other Gucci products. Even better, maybe one day I look inside of this purse to find that I've been gifted tickets to a trip to see Gucci's fashion show in Paris. Lastly, imagine if when I finally decided to sell that purse, Gucci then got a fraction of that secondary sale. And that really is what an NFT is. It's an asset that can not only be used as a social identifier and access to a community, but also as a golden ticket to unique engagement opportunities and experiences, all while allowing for brands to form new and stronger connections with their end consumer. Lastly, this is really made for this new age consumer. From the crypto side, this is a, a very passionate community. NFTs, if done authentically, can be a, a way to resonate with them. And then more broadly speaking, when thinking about the uh, consumer and what the consumer of tomorrow might look like, this is a faction of the population that's grown up with Fortnite and Roblox and digital experiences. The idea of a digital asset and, and how it can be used, while maybe foreign to many of us, this is nothing new to them. They know this thing like the back of their hands. And NFTs are really a way to prepare for that future. So with that said, while it might be out there, uh, big brands are really beginning to experiment in the NFT space today. Yeah, so many of you may have seen the work that's already being created in the NFT space. 
For example, you have brands like Adidas partnering with Board Ape Yacht Club to create unique digital and physical experiences, or McDonald's launching the McRib NFT to generate buzz around McRib's return, or the NBA creating the next generation of collectibles with Top Shot. You know, we think these are all great forays into NFTs, a, a version one or a V1, if you will. But what might the next wave of NFT and brand use cases look like? The first interesting trend that we've seen um, are our partnerships and projects using NFTs to extend real world experiences into the virtual world. So the most compelling recent example that we've seen is the Australian Open's Art Ball NFT project. So the Australian Open launched a collection of 6,776 NFTs, each assigned one square section of the real world Australian Open court. So using official match data, every winning shot from the tournament's 600 matches links to one of the collection's NFTs. Owners of these specific NFTs receive an airdrop with footage of the winning shot, virtual wearables, and Australian Open merchandise. And if the winning point happens to be uh, one of the tournament's 11 championship points, the NFT owner will also receive the physical ball from the match in a custom engraved case. So concurrently, the Australian Open has created a, a virtual experience within Decentraland where users can access content such as behind the scenes footage exclusively in the metaverse. And we think this is a, a very unique example of how a brand can engage a community around passion points such as tennis or NFTs and merge a real world experience with the digital world, ultimately reaching a new group of consumers. So the second trend we've identified is the rise of cultural capital. So much like an expensive watch or a purse, uh, like Drew mentioned, crypto punks and board apes have become a status symbol within the NFT community. And some of the rarest NFTs within these projects have sold for, for millions of dollars. And over the past few months, cultural icons such as Eminem and Jay-Z, Steph Curry and Jimmy Fallon have purchased those aforementioned blue chip NFTs, signaling their inclusion or membership into these NFT communities. And this only adds to the status that these NFTs convey. So as more celebrities and musicians and sports stars dip their toes into the NFT space, these communities will only gain more of a foothold in popular culture, making it an opportunity for brands to create lasting, relevant communities from the ground up. And Drew touched on it a bit earlier, but we talked about community and introduced the concept of utility or value for NFTs, but we want to highlight an example of a project iterating on both. So Gary Vee is someone who has built an engaged community powered by a series of 10,000 NFTs that he calls vFriends. Anyone that owns a vFriend is granted membership into the community. And at the core, the token is a ticket to an exclusive and curated annual conference called vCon. There are multiple layers to each token and each token is imbued with unique utility and value. For example, there's a token called the Hangout Hawk that unlocks five 60 minute hangouts each year with Gary Vee. And there's also a token called the Gifted Goat, for example, that unlocks six gifts per year. And outside of V Friends, Gary V has also recently expanded into the restaurant space, leveraging NFTs to provide exclusive access to a new restaurant concept called Flyfish. And we really think that these examples help illustrate the level of creative depth that a brand can experiment with using this emerging technology of NFTs. So knowing all of this, now what? How, what can you do as a brand? Are you looking to build a community of super fans through the adoption of an ownership model? Super fans meaning the loyal, passionate fans that are not simply paying for experiences or product, but have really bought into brand capital or assets, you know, tokens in this case. These are the tokens that provide access to and power the future of brand experience. And then you get this really interesting dynamic of aligned incentives where all the stakeholders within a branded community are incentivized to continue to create value for each other. So for the brand, continue to provide high quality experiences and products, and for other members, continuing to engage and build up fellow members and the community as a whole. So, but how do you do that? How can brands participate in an authentic value additive and hopefully long lasting way? We'll apply a very simple framework and explore how some brands are getting involved. And what we've seen are brands taking one of three approaches. 
You have companies like ABI's Budweiser building their own NFT project and community. They took this route after many months of being active in the space, buying NFTs from different projects, tweeting, engaging with community, and really being a consistent stakeholder. So while we're still waiting to see the extent of the value and utility they plan to provide, their approach is to avoid being extractive uh, and more value additive. Then we see companies like Nike, which may not have been as active in the community, but have found and purchased an NFT brand, in this case, Artifact Studios. The decision to buy really stems from finding a brand that fit their ethos, aesthetic, and vision uh, that resonated with their core consumers. And ultimately, they, it shares passion points with streetwear, collectibles, and exclusive drops. With this move, Nike can now explore a new monetization model through virtual goods. And now they have this perfect segmentation and overlap between uh, the fans of both Nike and Artifact Studios. So finally, we have brands like Adidas that partner with uh, NFT projects. Uh, they're working with the likes of G Money, Punk's Comics, and Board Ape Yacht Club to create content, create experiences, and products that leverage their respective IPs. You know, the risk and cost for partnering is much lower than perhaps the other two approaches. And of these three, we've definitely seen less of the build and buy approaches, which if we think about it, makes complete sense. There's so much activity in this space, so many projects. It's so difficult to know what lands well and what will resonate with a brand looking to participate. The beauty of this framework is that these approaches, uh, for, for each of these approaches, brands can really find a route that fits them best. While there isn't a one size fits all approach uh, or a way in, what we do know is that it's crucial for brands to participate, to play the role of normalizing the space for consumers and to ensure the growth and longevity of this space as a whole. And so NFTs are such an exciting uh, technology with infinite opportunity. There's a ton of potential upside while the risk for testing is relatively low. You know, imagine if you were able to get in at the ground level of the internet uh, or were the first team to build a social media page. You're setting yourself up to outcompete or, or out compete and surpass competitors. There is still a lot of white space and opportunity for brands. Most companies are only starting to scratch the surface of NFTs and really only time can tell what uh, is, is yielded as, as more brands participate. It's such a great time to be a company that is innovating and experimenting in the space to lean into NFTs as a way to provide continual value, an always on source of value for consumers. But you know, what does that mean? How do we continue to create incredible products and experiences personalized for your tribe, engaging a passionate and, and loyal community around your brand, products, experiences, and NFTs? and then ultimately being able to reach this next generation of consumers. And as with all new technology, it's all incredibly intimidating. You know, where does a brand even start? Who are the right partners to involve? What's the strategy? And those are all questions that Drew, Matt and I, and I, I think through here at Radical. The work that we do is rooted in helping some of the world's leading companies map out and navigate areas of innovation. You know, the metaverse and NFTs are some of the, those areas that we've seen an explosion in, in interest and, and questions. And we help our brands think through their strategy, apply venture frameworks to identify who's the right partner, who are the right players, who are the most interesting spaces. And we'd love to be a partner with you as well. Um, and as I think as Drew mentioned, you know, we, we've never felt more passionate about a space before. We'd love to just chat and with you, you know, how are you thinking through it? What are the, some of the sub areas within this broader ecosystem that we find most compelling? How do we even get started? So please you know, feel free. <laughs> We're always open to a chat. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. You know, the format for our emails are simply Leon, Drew or Matt at radicalinsights.com. We always love exploring how brands can get involved authentically and in additive ways. So thank you for the time today. Awesome, and I, I think we have uh, time for a couple questions. Um, I've seen some questions come up in the, the Q&A side. Um, let's see, Maggie's question is, uh, 
What are the highest potential partnerships nonprofits can pursue with brands that are active in the Web3 space? Um, really, really great, great question. Um, and one of the things that, that I've seen, and, and curious, maybe Matt and Leon's perspective as well, but I think generally speaking, a lot of these Web3 native brands are actively looking for ways um, to get back. I mean, we all know that they have done, quite honestly, pretty well. And, and one example is finding a specific NFT project or community that perhaps resonates directly with, with the nonprofit. Um, one example that initially comes to mind, at least for me, is, is Board Ape Yacht Club. They were they are the the, the monkeys that I was uh, referring to. Um, they released a kind of side project called Board Ape Kennel Club, where everybody in the yacht club got a free dog, and all of those royalties were then given back um, to a nonprofit um, that was active in in the animal space. So uh, they essentially found a, a nonprofit that had a same ethos um, in a sense as the brand that they're building and. Uh, because of that, they were able to build a, a pretty unique relationship with a, a nonprofit that way. Um, maybe one more question. The limits of customer experiences for brands in, in the short and medium term. Leon or Matt, do either one of you want to take this? If not, I can uh, go ahead and, and give it a shot as well. I, I, do, I think I'll, I'll provide I, something really short, I guess. Um, it's... It's really hard. I think we talk about utility. I think um, so. We talk about utility and community. The community piece seems to be the one that's like already there. Like you, you have folks that you can engage. People we can call your tribe, but it's really the utility piece that that is still. I think it being or it's still more like experimental. How do you kind of take something that's natively digital to create a an, a, a you know a physical or in person experience, which I think is is an area that or a limit at at this point, um, but also a huge opportunity for brands to to kind of think through what does utility mean for them? Is it experiences? Is it more like unique products? So I think that's definitely uh, both a limit at, at this current stage. Like how do you deliver those? But then also um, an opportunity for brands. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Leon makes a great point. And the other piece that I was going to echo on is that today there are just there are just general consumer hurdles when it comes to this crypto space. Um, I don't know if anybody has tried to buy something on OpenSea, but you have to transfer money to an account, create a MetaMask. There are a lot of just general consumer hurdles around gas fees and things like that. And plus, the Ethereum network today is pretty expensive. And so if you're a, a brand, there are a lot of considerations around how am I going to access my end consumer in this crypto space, not only the hurdles that I mentioned, but also where I'm going to build, whether it's Ethereum or um, another chain that perhaps has less fees and is quicker. So there are definitely a lot of considerations, I think, to, to the point that Leon and Matt were making earlier, is that now is really the time to experiment and figure out what works and, and what doesn't work and try and be one of these early uh, brands um, in this space, which is why it's so exciting. Wow, yeah, no, that's that great, guys. A, uh, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for that. No, that was that's really insightful. And guys, if there's there's lots of questions in the Q and A there that I know they didn't get a chance to get around to. We do have a packed pack schedule today. We've got over 110 different speakers to get through. So their email addresses are on the on the screen there. Do reach out to them. Any follow up questions there that you might have? I know it's a short time on stage today, but it's a packed pack schedule. Really excited. Uh, lots of lots of stuff going on today. So I want to thank you, Drew, Matt, and Leon for that. And um, see you in the next session, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dickie. Thanks, all.